An active storm track to bring multiple shots of snow for many this week. Who could see accumulation and how much in today's video? Welcome in folks. Happy and wonderful Monday at start of the week. And it is December 8th out there, somehow already the 8th of December. But we've uh, got a very active day for many of us. We've got snow falling right now out there. Uh, some of us going to get a really nice festive snowstorm today. And then we've got more snow on the way uh, for others. Although I'll tell you, it's going to be a lot of the rich gets richer here over the next seven days. But we're going to try to sneak in opportunities for some folks that maybe haven't gotten as much snow this winter uh, to try to pick up on a little bit. So we'll be breaking it all down for you, including a shot of Arctic air on the way for some how cold it could get yeah we'll talk about that as well if you're new to the channel welcome my name's gerald i'm a meteorologist at wccb charlotte if you haven't already go ahead and like the video subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications doing so it's free it doesn't cost you a penny all it does is help me continue to run this channel for free like i currently do through the power of youtube and to help to get these videos out to more folks so it's a win-win so if you watch regularly and you're not subscribed you might as well go ahead and do it all right let's go ahead and dive right on into the details and get started next to me is the latest run of our european ensemble so uh, basically a bunch of uh, different little runs of the european or members of the european suite and then finding the average of it for potential snowfall on the way over the next, this is 10 days or so. And uh, again, I wouldn't take exact uh, specifics from this map, but just to get the general idea. You see, we start this with a big burst of snow over portions of the Virginias and northern North Carolina. That's our ongoing storm. And then you just see more of this active track of Alberta clippers flying through the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and even into portions of the Northeast. And that's really going to be the big story over the coming uh, week or so. I'll tell you one thing, though, it is cold out there, so it's uh, no wonder we're seeing some snow. We are uh, well below freezing up into the Midwest right now, down into single digits this morning into portions of Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, up into Minnesota, even the interior northeast. Our friends up into Canada, uh, quite cold to say the least this morning. Some of that cold air even starting to continue to ooze south and east, and that's been the common theme, folks, is these shots of colder air uh, that kind of start up into the Midwest, work through the Great Lakes, hit the northeast, and then kind of ooze south from there uh, and it's going to be more of the same where that came from we've got the cold air we've also got some energy flying around out there today we've got a trough uh, parked right over really the heart of the eastern u.s here and it's got this corridor of lift associated with it over the carolinas and the virginias and sure enough, with that, you guessed it, we do have some snow. In fact, a bit of a snowstorm, we'll call it, over portions of West Virginia. It's snowing into much of Virginia, even down into the mountains of North Carolina. Likely going to get some snow in Greensboro and Raleigh today. Uh, even snowing back towards Louisville and into Huntington as well. So then that begs the question, where do we go from here? Who is going to see some of the highest accumulations and exactly how much? Well, let's break it down for you. Let's time out this uh, southeastern mid-Atlantic, whatever you'd like to call it, probably more mid-Atlantic than anything, uh, winter storm. And it is a winter storm, as we do have some winter storm warnings up for parts of Virginia out of this one. Uh, I'll tell you, at my place here in Charlotte right now, we've got uh, some drizzle, a little bit of rain, and we've had some ice pellets mixing in. I'm hoping maybe we can get a quick uh, just burst of snow here for Lucky into the Charlotte metro. But either way, you're really going to want to be north of I-40 for the best chance of snow here. And you're really going to be uh, going to want to be, I should say, into southern and central Virginia. That's where we could see three to six inches of snow out of this event before all is said and done. Uh, now, let's time it out for you. This is around 11 a.m. when probably many of you are hopping on and watching this. And uh, mostly rain south of I-40, probably a rain, snow, sleet mix, something along those lines. North of I-40, though, we've got snow up towards Boone, trying to change over to snow into the Triad, Winston-Salem, Wake Forest University there, uh, into the Greensboro area, likely to see at least a burst of snow out of this. If you're in Virginia, outside of Virginia Beach and kind of uh, Norfolk and southeastern Virginia and the Chesapeake, this is going to be an all-snow event. Now, areas out further east in Virginia, we'll see snow eventually but likely starting as rain there. You go throughout the day, it's just a good old-fashioned snow day into West Virginia, into Virginia, and check it out. By the time we get to this afternoon, that cold air starts to catch up to this coastal low. We get this phasing of energy with an upper-level short wave and that coastal uh, energy that's already there, and the cold air changes what was rain to a nice burst of moderate uh, wet snowfall into uh, the Raleigh metro, especially points east and north of Raleigh up towards Virginia Beach into the Chesapeake going to see some snow out of this uh, much of uh, really much of Virginia in general south of the DMV going to get a nice burst of snow today that is likely to accumulate 
By the time you get to the evening, 7 o'clock, it's still snowing in the northeastern North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. Uh, I'm telling you, this is an area I would watch to get some sneaky higher totals than maybe some of the uh, forecasts are right now for that region. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely something to watch there. And uh, overnight tonight, we start to fizzle this out into just some flurries. And by the time we get past 3 a.m., 5 a.m. and waking up tomorrow, things start to really calm down in terms of uh, what's going on out there. Now, in terms of how much snow we can expect, let me pull that map up for you. Uh, we'll start with this. This is the forecast from the National Weather Service as of 7 a.m. Eastern. So subtract anything you've gotten since 7 a.m. this morning from when you're watching this to these totals. And you can see the, the bulk of this is going to be the high country of North Carolina and into central Virginia, where Roanoke could see three to five inches. Richmond could see three to five inches, points in between. That same general total, some three to six inch totals, even into the higher terrains. Uh, and then uh, you get up further north towards Harrisonburg, Charlottesville, probably about two to four inches. Virginia Beach down into Greenville and Raleigh. This area is where I could see these totals being higher than what is being forecasted. Uh, Greensboro, probably about right, maybe a dusting upwards of an inch in a best case scenario. Anything south of 40 here, uh, you're going to just have to hope for some white rain, as I call it. Uh, but like I said, watch this Raleigh, Virginia Beach, Greenville corridor for some higher in totals than maybe the tenth or two inch or two tenths of an inch that uh, the forecast from National Weather Service is showing. Here's the HER forecast. See how it kind of bumps up the totals here? A lot of the times when we get this phasing of energy, you get a burst of snow out into areas like Richmond, Raleigh, Greenville, Virginia Beach. Uh, Virginia Beach probably maybe still on the lower side, but you go a little bit further uh, west from there towards Norfolk. Uh, that's where we could see some higher end totals. Just to give you an idea, some of these uh, are in you know the three to five inch range on the model, probably more like one to three in reality. Uh, but uh, yeah, watching that corridor for some higher end potential snow totals out of this event today. Again, Charlotte, Fayetteville, if you're lucky, you'll get some back in flurries. It's really a Greensboro, Raleigh, Greenville, north up into Virginia and West Virginia that we'll need to watch in West Virginia too. Going to get some good totals not to forget you folks. All right. Those or that's the uh, breakdown for the current storm. What's next? Well, more clippers. Let's talk about them and where they're going and who they're going to drop snow on. Well, today's uh, winter weather event is not the only one. Let me back up our map and uh, get it to the right time here. And you're going to notice pretty quickly, the northern stream has really been the dominant uh, force of action as of late. We'll zoom this back out to the entire eastern United States, and we'll pick it up tonight as our uh, mid-Atlantic system is dying out. As that's happening, a new shortwave piece of energy, and that means another burst of snow up into Minnesota, likely Minneapolis northbound, uh, all the way up towards the Canadian line overnight. That works into Wisconsin, into the UP of Michigan, and then into the mitten of Michigan by tomorrow morning. Continues working east into portions of Canada, the St. Lawrence River Valley, I think uh, Montreal, and a lot of the big Canadian cities out here are going to see some snow flying out of this one. Then we're getting into Tuesday evening and an even stronger clipper starts to show up uh, again for really for the same areas. I told you at the start of the video, the rich get richer. That's really the theme here uh, with the current pattern. But I could actually get even a little bit of rain in Minneapolis out of this as uh, some warm air tries to come in for just a brief time. But north of there into Wisconsin, into northern Minnesota. Heavy uh, snow, probably even blowing snow. This is a pretty strong clipper here. Uh, so it'll be brief, but it'll pack a punch. Works on into Wisconsin, into Michigan. And remember, this one a little bit warmer on the south side, but if you're north of that parent low pressure, definitely going to be a nice little snow event. And this one works all the way through the northeast. We get a nice interior northeast snowfall by Wednesday evening. Uh, all rain likely for the I-95, unfortunately, for folks there. Likely get some northwest flow on the backside of this overnight Wednesday into Thursday. And that sets up shop with our next shot of very cold Arctic air that starts to work on in. First, though, let's talk about how much snow we could get out of uh, these kind of two quick clippers. And uh, I think the big winner is going to be up here into portions of the northern plains and the Midwest. This is a general thinking. This is now all the way through Thursday afternoon, but could easily see some half a foot to a foot totals into northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and into extreme uh, northeastern North Dakota there. Minneapolis going to be a little bit too far south for the heaviest totals, but could still pick up a couple of inches at most uh, between now and, like I said, your Thursday afternoon. You shift this east, I also think, uh, like I mentioned, northern Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, uh, the northern mitten here, also going to get uh, some good snowfall totals out of this. Remember, anything that's pink on this map or uh, further to the north is uh, around half a foot plus of snowfall. 
And you can see it's that corridor for really a lot of the same folks that have already gotten quite lucky this winter. Probably not as much this go around for Iowa, Chicago, as the track has shifted a little bit further north from the previous uh, storm track that we had uh, maybe uh, this past week where we got some good snow into those states. But still, big snowfall totals nonetheless for some. And that does include the interior of the northeast where a couple of inches is going to be possible. Even some lake effect enhanced stuff coming in here into the Tug Hill, down into Erie, uh, Cleveland, Buffalo could see some totals out of this. Once again, though, not looking like much here into the I-95 region. I know the snow hole lives on, right, from Boston all the way down to D.C. At least D.C. picked up an inch last week. Uh, but if you're in New York City, you're in Philadelphia, you're in Boston, uh, Hartford, uh, Providence, into the Cape, you're wondering where in the world is my snow well, I'll tell you a couple things. One, it's early in the winter, so don't get too worried. Also, with this next shot of Arctic air, there's at least the potential, not a guarantee, but the potential that maybe we could get some snow further east by this coming weekend. Let's talk about that Arctic air and the potential snow it could bring if the puzzle pieces align. Well, it's time to take a look at our weekly blueberry, if you will. This is our 500 millibar height anomaly map. And remember, this shows pockets of cold air and warm air, troughs, ridges, and all that beautiful stuff that uh, is important for forecasting uh, the weather, especially whenever we're just getting uh, a look at the broad picture here over the next week. So we've got today's system. You can see it's a big pocket of cold and a big pocket of energy. Sure enough, what are we getting? Well, we're getting a winter storm into Virginia and there's even some snow as far south as North Carolina. So yeah, the math checks out. Always love it whenever it does that. Here comes our next big shot of cold air. And uh, unfortunately for folks further south and east, this is kind of trended a little bit more north and, uh, or uh, I should say south and west. This is trending more north and east recently. So it looks like the block of this is going to work right over the northeastern United States. Now, uh, that's going to definitely bring cold air. I can guarantee you that. Will it bring snow? It's possible. Remember, here's the center of the trough. Anything on the right-hand side is where we have lift in the atmosphere. It's where we have that upper-level diffluence where, remember, the air separates. That creates a void. It's got to get filled, so it uh, fills from the bottom, and that means rising motion. And right along the coastline, a lot of times, that can mean a bit of a coastal storm. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So that's our big block of cold air that we're working with. This is for your Thursday. And then it kind of hangs around and gets maybe a little bit of a reinforcement here uh, by your Friday and Saturday. Here's the problem, though, folks. This is why we haven't managed a big storm. See how quickly this forms, and then it's just out of here. Uh, we have no blocking whatsoever up into Greenland, so that's allowing these shots of cold air to be very transient. Now, it's been a very active northern stream track, but this is why this has just been a lot of clippers and not a lot of coastal storms. And until we get big blocking up into Greenland, a very uh, negative NAO, we're going to probably have some of the cold air, although I see it fading even a little bit by the middle of the month, at least for a period. Uh, but we're just we're struggling to get these big coastal storms because this uh, cold air and energy is in and then it's immediately out of here and it just keeps coming in waves instead of getting bottled up. Either way, though, like I said, going to be cold for sure. Already today, uh, high temperatures well below average uh, for everyone really east of the Mississippi. In fact, most of us east of the Rockies uh, seeing that shot of cold air. And you can see we get a little bit of a warm up by maybe the middle of the week. Doesn't last too long, though, because here comes the next shot of Arctic air. Uh, another, you know, 10 to 20, 25 degrees below average. And then that gets reinforced even more by this coming weekend. And uh, we'll have to watch to see how things end up. Do we end up, uh, or how far south does the cold get, basically? Right now, uh, it says warmer in Charlotte by this coming weekend. But yesterday, it said a lot colder. So uh, something definitely to monitor there. The uh, blend of models, I'll tell you, you can look at the percentiles um, for Charlotte, for example, just because I live here. I know yesterday when I was working and putting together the forecast, the lowest 10th percentile uh, for this coming Sunday had highs of around 30. The upper, you know, whatever had highs around 50. So a big 20 point spread in the possibilities. Definitely a lot to figure out. But either way, confident it is going to get cold. Let's show it to you. Uh, this is um, morning lows for this coming Sunday. Here's that Arctic air. And it looks like negative 10 to 15 degrees below zero uh, for Fargo. Minneapolis is at least the mean of things. Remember, this could swing one way or the other a bit, but that's the average. We have warmed up the numbers a bit uh, further south in places like Charlotte and kind of the Tennessee Valley. It uh, looks still to be cold, but maybe uh, just a bit below average instead of very below average. But I think the Midwest, the Great Lakes, up into Canada and into uh, the northeastern United States. That's where the worst of this Arctic outbreak will likely be by this coming weekend as uh, that cold air settles in. All right, final question to answer. Will it bring some snow? I'll show you the European model and its ensembles, and uh, we'll kind of take a look at that possibility. 
All right, let's talk about it. Here's for your Wednesday evening. Here's that clipper system I mentioned that uh, will bring some snow to some, but mainly into the interior northeast and up through the Midwest. That kind of works on out of here. And again, there's the center of it with that L on your map, working right up the St. Lawrence River Valley into Canada. All right, keep going ahead into time. And uh, what do we get? Well, we get a lot of lake effect, it looks like, by your Thursday. And sure enough, by Thursday and Friday, another clipper system dives down with that next shot of cold air. How far south does it get? We'll find out, but right now it gets a good band of snow into uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, West Virginia. Virginia, again, even tries to get some snow into D.C., Baltimore by this coming uh, Friday into Saturday. Philly, it tries getting a little bit of snow, uh, but then just struggles to transfer the energy all the way to the coast, and it kind of dries up a bit on us, and then you get another little quick clipper system. And another quick little clipper system, and that's kind of all the way through the next uh, 7 to 10 days or so. And you get the idea, folks. It's what I told you. It's just very transient right now. These pieces of energy are flying through, which means the ceiling is only so high, and uh, it's only going to get so far east before it runs out of precipitation or moisture unless it can phase with something at the coast. And that's really the ultimate question. So what are the odds that happens? Well, let's talk about it. This is your 24-hour uh, probability of seeing an inch of snowfall. Obviously, really high today into Virginia, West Virginia, and even the northern borders there of North Carolina. Uh, but you keep going. Here's the clipper systems working on through, the ones we already talked about. Even get some northwest uh, flow and uh, some lake effect flow. In fact, I'm going to even take a trip to the mountains Thursday or Friday. How about that? Maybe I'll try to see some snow up towards Boone. Um, off topic, doesn't matter, but just making my own schedule in my head, right? <laughs> uh, then comes the next bigger system, and this is the one that has bigger question marks. This is the Friday, Saturday one I showed you that's a little bit further south, even tried to get snow into places like Philly, D.C., and Baltimore. Good band showing up here on the ensembles from North Dakota all the way down through Iowa, Illinois, even into Indiana, Ohio, heck, even towards Louisville. Uh, but then you start getting into the Mid-Atlantic, and the signal's there. You get lake effect signal, you get northwest flow signal, but it starts to lose some steam. Again, these systems, you know, they grab moisture from the Great Lakes, but they can only bring it so far east with them unless they can pick up some Atlantic moisture. Some of the ensemble members do. Some of them try to get moisture all the way through the I-95. Right now, though, it's in the minority. It's in that 20 to 30% chance range of getting something like that. Highest chance is going to be lake effect um, and northwest flow snow as of right now for this coming weekend. Now, things can and they will change, but that's what I'm seeing. And then, folks, heads up, I think by next week, we're probably going to get at least a bit of a break. Maybe not a full-blown break, uh, but... Um, I think we're going to calm down the snow train a little bit. We're going to get a brief warm-up. How long will it last? Will it last all the way through Christmas? Uh, I doubt it'll last forever. That's the good news. Uh, in fact, I'll guarantee you it won't last forever. Uh, it's just a matter of when can we get uh, that cold air back into place and can we get a strong negative NAO with it to slow down the energy and really enhance East Coast snow chances. Well, that's all. only really time will tell. But for now, uh, that's your forecast for the next 7 to 10 days. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe out there. Stay warm. Enjoy the snow if you're getting it today. Tag me on social media, especially Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I'd love to see your stuff, and I'll uh, repost you and uh, retweet you and whatever you want to call it uh, if you tag me. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you all next time.